thank you all for, for taking time to to have a chat. Um, we're here obviously to talk about History of Evil, which is dropping on Shudder uh, really soon. Uh, Bo, this is you know this is your feature debut. It's quite a personal story as well. What was it about this story in particular that made this the one that you wanted to be? You know, your sort of your coming out into the world in a way. Yeah, I um. I always kind of wanted to write something about what my parents went through during the Iranian revolution in the late seventies. Um, I know that was a really scary time for them and for a lot of people. So I started writing a script that was a contained family drama set um, during that time. But as I was writing it, um, I was kind of looking at it and I was like, kind of like thinking is this going to be interesting to other people like it's really interesting to me but is it going to be interesting to other people um and it was feeling super heavy not that history of evil isn't but at the yes. time that script was feeling very heavy uh so i was like i want to infuse it with some horror elements because i'm a i love genre um so initially <laughs> I, took, I took this like family you know drama set around this um, political unrest in Iran in the 70s. And I added a lot of genre elements to it. And then from there, it just started taking a lot of different iterations through development. And at one point, um, it then kind of like became uh, the story set in near future America. But a lot of the grounded sort of malicious stuff carried over from the initial script. Um, and yeah, it was a lot of the bones of it were inspired from my parents' story back in Iran, being part of this resistance movement against like, you know, a, a brutal Iranian government. And Jackie and Paul, you know, for you guys as as actors, uh, what was it about this script and, and these characters in particular that made you guys want to get involved? Because as much as it is sort of inspired by the past, it feels horribly, horribly pertinent to, to today's society. Yeah, I think that that what you just said is kind of what inspired me. <clears throat> my my favorite genre films um, are always ones that have um, a deeper meaning. I don't like just gore for the sake of gore or thrill for the sake of thrill. There has to be something, whether it's... And this, for me, is a cautionary tale mixed with... Um, cautionary tale on many levels. A cautionary tale about, uh, obviously, uh, political sort of unrest and what could potentially happen if we become... Too, um, gosh, I don't know, for lack of a better word, nationalistic, or or too, um, uh, not not not. Uh, we don't learn how to cohabitate um, in the right way, um, but it's also a tale about um, a man. Uh, myself, looking from my character perspective, it was a tale about a man who uh, was unable to, um, I guess, express his masculinity in a healthy way. He uh, was the victim of a sort of. And this is something we experience in our time. <clears throat> There's a lot of, you know, a lot of um, young boys feel like they need to be a certain way in order to be real men. And I think that it's quite the opposite. Um, and I think Ron uh, became a victim of, of that circumstance. So a lot of things that drew me to this. Um, it, it's a quite a, um, you know, it's a film that makes you think. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for me too. Um, I was also raised by like five women in, you know, uh, so I didn't really have a father figure. So to me, uh, being a strong woman was what I had to be anyway. So that to be felt really, um, I connected with the character Alegre very quickly. And I knew, I know someone like Alegre. So um, to me, uh, just, you know, trying to take a little bit from uh, my growing up in in let's say in a macho world like the Dominican Republic where everything you know the man has the last word uh, and then growing up myself in a world right now where I'm you know working a lot with the Justice League and 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 the and the Women's March and working with those women and watching how they balance family um, and and use their voices for the voiceless I uh, I was very connected right away and as soon as I, I read the script I, I, I wanted I wanted to, to do that I wanted to be that voice 
and it's it's my first lead and and um i i i haven't read a script of of a character like that ever so i was very excited about it and i'm I'm so happy that Bo chose me to do it I mean, I love that it is this, you know, it's this family drama. It's, I think so often in these sort of stories, it's the man who's kind of like the most wanted fugitive or whatever. And it's the woman who's been home raising the kid. I love how this script sort of flipped that around. And it's the the man who's been at home raising the child and she's the sort of the political criminal. Um, and obviously they say this is a it's a family drama. So that means that there's, you know, there's mum, there's dad, and then there's a there's a daughter, you know, this six-year-old Daria. This film deals with some, you know, some heavy themes. There's some really, without too many spoilers, there's some really bleak moments. How do you guys as directors and co-stars go about sort of like safeguarding this sort of six-year-old and you know, making sure that you know she is handling this in the world of pretend as 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 it is essentially? Oh, she didn't need any safeguarding. If anything, she was scaring us, freaking us out. <laughs> but, <laughs> she loves, well, she loves the horror. She loves horror. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was. Well, you guys, you guys want to go you first? You guys want to go first? Well, I think Jackie should go first because truthfully, yeah. Jackie and her had a quite a, a nice uh, bond. Um, in, in, her and I were, she, she's at that age where she's like, boys are gross. Um, yeah. So I was, I was a little bit gross. So <laughs> Jackie can speak better. Uh, well, that little girl, she has, she, she did steal a little piece of my heart. She's incredible. Uh, my little pinguina, my little penguin. Um, she was <laughs> awesome. We uh, connected right away. Like, you know, it was my first time being a mother. I just gave birth three months before I shot the film. So uh, I was just connected with, like, kids. I don't know. And I've always loved kids. But um, there's something very special about um, Murphy. And uh, it, it it wasn't hard to work with her at all. She had her line. She... Um, we played games in between takes. She wasn't scared at all. Like he, uh, Paul said that she kind of scared us because she loves the the horror. You know, she loved doing like the scary stuff. So her mom was very protective, and she was there the whole time. And um, she knows it's not real. And and uh, uh, she she if it could be scary, her she wanted to do that. You know. So I I definitely it was a cool experience to work with her, and she's a very talented kid and. Um, and our our relationship was very genuine and grounded because it was really like that in real life. So I hope that you felt that in the film, and uh, uh, because we were like best friends, literally the whole the whole time we like played games. It was it was really really cool. So yeah, yeah, for me it was an awesome time. Yeah, and and she was um, Murphy was one thing she did really well that stood out at her audition was she was so grounded. Um, a lot of times kids tend to go over the top, especially in like a scary scene. Um, they tend to go too big. And she was always so grounded and incredibly precise in her performance. Like I would give her one note and just, she was definitely more mature than her age because yeah. the way she would take that note and apply it to her performance was so precise. I was always impressed. I was like, this is making my job easier. Like she's awesome. Yeah. And she did like, she did love horror. She was always doing the red rum from the shining, like in that voice. And um, she was just kind of very morbid, which I thought was kind of cool. Cause she was sophisticated for her age. Yeah. She's, really cool. she's unique. She's going to be a, a big thing. I believe. Yeah. One of these days. Yeah. Yeah, I love the scene, like the counting scene, you know, where where like you guys are, you know, you're holding your hand behind your back and yeah, how are you getting all these right? And you know, just she's just like, cause the little boy told me. And it's it's that, that matter of fact creepy way that kids say, I've got a five year old and you know, she'll be like, Oh, there were the people in my room last night and I'm like, What people? She's like, Oh, you know, the people that come into my room at night when I'm asleep and I'm like, Okay, I'm never coming to see you again at night. Yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> But is that you know that 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 the way that children can sort of tap into that? Yeah. Um, it's you know funny about you. You mentioned you know the red rum and like The Shining. I think this film has got a lot of parallels with the The Shining in a lot of ways, particularly with the with the journey of of Ron. It's I think when you first meet him, he seems you know 
he's you know he's the father he's the one that's been left at home with a kid and then as he enters this new environment we sort of see his perspective uh get changed and manipulated uh, so i guess my question for you paul is how did you sort of go about accessing that journey because it's quite a you know it's quite an intense one yeah i actually rewatched the shot it's one of my favorite movies and uh i actually rewatched the shining right before i shot this i think you and i talked about that bo yeah um i think we both rewatched it and uh <clears throat> Yeah, it, look, it's it wasn't easy. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the yeah, there was a lot of uh, creepy elements that were already there in terms of just the setting, which certainly helped me. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I tried to make humanize Ron. Um, I think anytime you're playing, I don't think Ron's the bad guy. Um, I think he becomes a very tormented, uh, very uh, broken man. Um, who does bad things. And I think for me, it was about grounding that, making him, uh, making the audience go, oh no, I wish, I wish, we're, we're, you know, I wish that uh, this didn't happen or, or I wish uh, Ron could just go back to being the guy that he was in the beginning of the movie. Um, who is this man? Like I wanted audiences to first, um, I wouldn't say fall in love with him, but just kind of understand him and, and have an affinity for him and then watch him slowly unravel. Um, and so I didn't really approach it as, a, you know, um, a character that I judged. I tried not to judge Ron and I tried to relate to him in my own personal way. And obviously a lot for me, a lot of the horror in this film comes from that real world application. The fact that, you know, maybe by 2045, we might not be in too dissimilar a place but then obviously there is these supernatural elements that are, are woven into how did you go about sort of balancing those those two contrasting sides is that for me or for paul yeah sorry um well i like i said initially it was all meant to be a family drama um and then the horror elements came into it i think the big conversation um i had with paul and just kind of with myself was trying to figure out the rules of the horror elements and how to get in and out of the real world and into the sort of horror peril universe upside down world whatever you want to call it um and we just kind of came to an agreement that this is in his subconscious and this ghost Kane Tozer is targeted Ron. It's kind of like in The Exorcist, right? In the original Exorcist, it kind of fixates on Reagan. It just picks someone that's weak and doesn't have that strength. So Kane Tozer saw Ron and saw something inside of him that was weak and broken, and he latched on to Ron and infected him. And at that point, it was just transitioning from nightmare logic which is like the scene where ron walks into the kitchen and has a conversation with um kane and then going back to his bedroom and his wife is there and sleeping and back to the grounded world so because it was in his subconscious um we were able to transition sort of out of these two worlds and I guess sort of my final question with the film coming to Shudder, you know, there's so much, there's so much to pick from on, on that platform. Why should people take a chance on History of Evil? What are they going to get from this film that they might not from some of the others? And that's for everybody. Um, well, I'll go first real quick. I think this film, uh, my favorite horror films are ones that kind of uh, challenge the audience intellectually and emotionally. Um, and everything that's happening on in the world, um, I think this film does a really good job of like taking the horrors of the real world and just kind of like mashing it up with fun genre elements of supernatural ghosts and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like it's a it's it'll stand out in that sense. Um, and just kind of, yeah, give the audience something that feels um, relevant to today. I was, to be honest, going to say the same thing. So, <laughs> Bo, Bo <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. Yeah, cautionary tale, and um, yeah, it's like the genre in many ways is uh, is just in a it's a magnifying glass on the drama. 
um, and of the commentary that we're making. And also, you know, like you, you know, you usually see the man, you know, at a, maybe a political prison, maybe the wife stays home with the baby. It's kind of unique story, kind of like the movie Alien too, to see a, a woman take the lead and be strong and powerful and, and kind of, I don't know, gain the trust of the people. And that, that was, that was beautiful to me and, and it's unique and you haven't seen it. So definitely watch it. <laughs> yeah, I was sending, um, I was sending Jackie to watch study Ripley's character and you know, Sarah Connor and these strong female leads. I mean, you can see behind me, like, yeah, and just kind of, yeah, I <laughs> hear that Sarah Connor. Ripley, <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm very much in with that. Well, I wish you guys the the best of luck with the film. Uh, thank you very much thank for you. taking the time to chat with me. Um, thank you. Just, I I thought it was great. Just the whole the checkpoint bit at the beginning. I think like. I didn't breathe um the wow. bit where you know the you know the little boys helping me I think my soul left my body temporarily because my daughter wow. says crap like that to me all the time oh so God. yeah and it's it's just so tense and because obviously it is an intimate setting it's yeah I think it what did you think about the end did you see that happening or no I think it was I mean I think I think the character of Ron is super fascinating and the fact that he is obviously being seduced by um you know this this entity but then he's sort of like I guess so the way I read it was like his paternal love kind of trumped everything and he didn't want to to harm yeah. his daughter or anything and then obviously he 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 did what he he did what he did um and yeah it's just you know just strong women I'm from a single single mother upbringing so just the whole female side of the story also really really spoke to me so yeah I awesome. I think the horror fans are gonna especially the Shudder fans are gonna really really enjoy it so thank you thank you so much and uh